Hello again, welcome back everyone. Thank you for joining me once again for another Spirit Review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the William & Humbert's Dry Sack 15 Year Solera Especial um, Medium Sweet Sherry. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh, but the reason for that is because Dry Sack does several variants of this sherry. They do one that's called a medium dry. That is not this. So again, what I am reviewing is the medium sweet 15 year old dry sack sherry. Okay? It will still look like this. This happens to be a big bottle and a big tube. Back in the day they used to sell these in 750 mls, which is what this is. Nowadays they're doing it in a smaller tube. I want to say it's 500 ml. Uh, still pricing I think even went up. Uh, because back in the day I was getting these at about $35 and I want to say the new ones are about the same price maybe even a little more maybe up to 40 uh, for the 500 mls uh, but the reason I wanted to review this today versus another spirit well is because I really really enjoy it and I think you will as well so in the sherry world of course we have a lot of different types of sherry the finos and the olorosos and of course then you can start getting into the other fortified wines the madeiras and the ports and all that and you know there's good ones in each and every category of course uh, when you start looking at olorosos a lot of times people think you know very sweet whiskeys and that's actually a misnomer because oloroso isn't exactly sweet it's the pedro jimenez sherry that is sweet so when you see a px finish on a on a single malt, you can pretty much expect that to be sweeter. But a lot of times the Olorosos add a lot of dense uh, flavor characteristics, but not necessarily a ton of sweetness, which is, you know, usually a good thing. Now, for this medium sweet, this is actually uh, uses a combination of grapes, and it uses kind of basically, it's almost like a cream sherry in that it's using basically an Oloroso and a Pedro Jimenez base that is blended. Um, but it doesn't lean as heavy on the PX as, let's say, a cream sherry. So if you're familiar with cream sherries, they can be really sweet because, again, there's just a little larger amount of Pedro Jimenez in those blends. This one has, I think it's just about half of what a cream sherry has as far as sugars from the PX. This has, you know, half less. Now, when you start talking about the regular dry sack medium dry sherry, that one's a quarter of this one. So that one is really dry, not very sweet at all, okay? Now, I tend to like this one because I love the dense, almost roncio character that it develops in the 15 years of it being in the Solera process, which I'm going to put in the description a little more details about what the Solera process is, but I'll give you a little quick rendition basically what they're doing and they do this in they do this in ports and madeiras and they do it in the rum world and so on even in brandies but what it is is basically this imagine a stack of barrels okay let's just for simplicity we'll just say it's four barrels high and each barrel each level of barrels is going to be uh, the youngest at the very top so in other words barrels that just pretty much get filled with the freshest uh, wines from the most recent harvest and then you have the second tier down from the top that's going to be a little older maybe let's say a two years older and then the third level second from the bottom is going to be again even older than that let's say it's six years old and then another two years you get to the bottom level at an eight year old and what they'll do is they basically will pull from the very bottom uh, level and those levels are called a uh, Criaderas. And that level, when they pull, and it's a regulated amount, it's very, um, they don't pull like the entire barrels from the bottom because then you're basically, it's, it's wrecking the system. What you're trying to do is you're just going to pull, let's say, 30%, 20% out of that bottom barrel. And then you're going to fill that with the second level, the barrel directly above it. You'll pull that 20% out of it and put it back into the bottom barrel. Then you go to the third level and you pull 20% from it and put it into that second level. And then you pull from the top level 20% and put it into that third level. And then you're going to top off the top level with, again, the freshest wine. That is the Solera method. And through that, you'll end up with this really well integrated, whether it be wine or spirit, uh, that has maturation so when you see this say 15 years it doesn't necessarily mean every drop of this is 15 years old 
but a good proportion a good portion of it is 15 years and it has been developing all that time and it does take 15 years for that whole method to come through and the solera to be pulled from the very bottom okay oh my goodness now again in the sherry world i'm always looking for something to sip that's going to be enjoyable not too sweet not too heavy but i like a lot of complexity because when i'm going into bourbons or i'm going into cognacs or armagnacs i'm looking for depth i'm looking for complexity and i kind of expect the same thing out of really good sherries or ports i don't need just a ton of jammy sweet fruits i need some depth and that's what this gives us and of course by looking at that color it pretty much looks like a really old tawny port very almost brownish yeah, brown, little bit of rust color going on. On the nose, good grief. Let's see if I can describe this one for you. Gosh. Okay. So you're getting a lot of a grape aspect, of course. This is wine uh, derived. But these grapes, some of them are kind of the typical kind of darker grapes. And then you get a little bit of the... I would say almost figs and dates in here. There's an old Roncio tone of like, kind of like a bacon wrapped date if there was some little bit of cheese in there as well. Some kind of pungent cheese. There's a little bit of that going on. Molasses, sorghum, that type character in here. honey but think uh you know how when you go in let's say in a mead so a honey wine some of those can have this really kind of mature when they're oak aged you get this really depth of the honey maturity that's what's in this one so this 15 year solera has really imparted a lot of darker deeper tones to it that bacon wrap dates that's actually a good call for this one chocolate lots of molasses and sorghum though yeah if you're familiar in the craft beer world if you're familiar with um, utopias from sam adams you know that is a beer but it is a really high abv beer that actually drinks very portish again uh, fortified wine character if you're familiar with that familiar with their triple box the old sam adams triple box that has a lot of this character in here. <sighs> okay, for the taste. Mm. Oh. The one thing I'll say is, again, we talked about the price point before I start getting into the tasting. I'll just I'll count that as a bonus for me. <laughs> but when you talk about the price point for these at thirty or forty dollars, again. You know, if you're looking at Utopias, you know, you're going to be looking much, much more than that. Uh, when you start getting this kind of Roncio in uh, Cognacs or Armagnacs, you're probably going to be in the upwards of 40 to 50 years old many times. I have seen them, some 25s, hitting that kind of tone. But I enjoy this simply because sometimes I want to be out on the patio and I just want to relax. And I don't want something really high ABV. And so... This fits the bill because this is just 20.5% ABV, so basically just 41 proof. So, you know, something like this. If you're looking for something to give you really full, dense flavor, but not really give you that uh, boozy, you know, feel, this Sherry's can be a really good way. All right. And also, if you do cigars, these are perfect for something like that. Okay. Okay. It's creamy, it's rich, it's mouth coating. Everything I described on the nose is coming through on the palate. That molasses, that uh, sorghum characteristic, there is that kind of uh, I would say tart, sour component to this almost like baked apples, baked plums, the figs. When I breathe out really slowly, you can kind of pick up a very subtle meatiness. And that was kind of like the one I was talking about, that bacon-wrapped fig. You're not going to taste this and think bacon. But 
when you when you focus on it and you start really kind of kind of picking out the nuances you will pick up that real little salty meatiness going on wow and then you get like Again, that molasses and sorghums, they're very unique flavor profiles, and these are dense in it. It's not quite coffee bean, but you get this kind of characteristic from those components when they're blended together. You do get that kind of grape uh, aspect kind of leaking through everything, so it's not super jammy like fresh, you know, like a fresh... Um, ruby port anything like that not that great vibrancy but you never lose the uh, the great component the great feel of everything in here as far as you know the others there's you don't get this spice well so a lot of times on you know when you're talking about whiskeys or you're talking about brandies when you get this kind of depth of flavor i'm always waiting for that mid palate to really where to see where the spice level is this you don't get any it never doesn't really develop or change or transitions nothing like that it just enters and just slowly dissolves the ronceal characteristic when I was talking about that little pungent cheese that little funkiness that's in here and it does hit a little early but if you're you know, let's say you don't like that type of aspect or you're kind of worried it's going to be too funky, too weird. I really wouldn't worry about it. It's, to me, it's everything you would expect to find, again, in a really, really good brandy or cognac. I would want to find some of this depth. Or when you're talking, again, that Utopia, some of the, one of the best, you know, most renowned craft beers as far as aged beers in oak barrels you're going to get this kind of component. Tawny ports, really, we're talking 30, 40 year old tawnies, you'll start getting this kind of flavor development. But here, with their skillful blending techniques, and of course, one thing they do pretty uh, uniquely at Williams and Humbert, is they actually blend the Oloroso and PX prior to going into the Solera. A lot of times they'll age the, the PX and the Oloroso separately in their own Soleras, and then work the blends after. Here they do the ratios beforehand, then they go into the Solera all together. So they have all this time, those years, 15 years, to really kind of marry and just develop constant complex flavor profiles. Um, and that's what we're seeing here. So again, I hope you see this bottle out there near you. I know of a few stores around. I'm going to probably put that in my tips for the uh, patrons. So if you can, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. Um, and that's where you get these videos two weeks early. You're going to get those real insightful tips like that, buying tips. Uh, because, you know, when you get that two-week head start on finding bottles like this, you'll have a greater chance uh, before they hit YouTube. Uh, but thank you, as always, for being here, regardless of which platform you're watching. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Keep leaving all those great comments. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.